So this is how we're going to do it. Um, I had mentioned earlier, but um, what we want to do, okay, so what we want to do is we're going to have you guys introduce your business. You're going to pitch it for three minutes. You're going to pitch your business for three minutes. And um, the judges, um, Robbie Respello, who's from the United Way, she's the president of United Way. We have Savin De um, Sarad Davenport, who's the, um, the founder of Vintage Vinegar Hill um, Apparel. And myself, Ty Cooper, and I'm the owner and founder of Life View Marketing and Visuals. So we're going to be judging. We're going to judge it. We're going to ask questions if we need to ask questions to get clarity. Um, and then we're going to go to the next person and do the same thing. Um, right now, we have six participants um, that's competing. And as, um, as Nathan said, we have, we're giving out $1,000, which is sponsored by CIC. And I'm giving out a 15 second fully produced branding video um, to, to use however you want to use it, but it'll be TV ready. So if you wanted to put it on television, it'll be TV ready. You can do that, or you could just use it you know, on your website or social media. Okay. All right. So um, do we have Shamir Productions here? Shamir Productions? Okay. I think she, um, she said she couldn't do it. Okay, good. So we have Raphael uh, Oliver, the business, small business LLC. And we have, um, is it Janaya? Jendai. Jendai. Okay, Jendai. Okay, I messed that totally up. I'm so sorry. I do it all the time. Um, Mission Counseling and, and Consulting LLC. Then we have um, Troy, Troy Robinson, BIB, that's Business in a Box. And we have, oh, and not and, but we have Kalina Sozot, Kozot, PhD, from Selena Kozot Consulting. And we have Mary um, Mercy Best from Steam Kits. So it's pronounced, it's spelled K-I-T-X, but it's pronounced Kits, K-I-T-S. So Steam Kits, all right? So um, I'm going to go by no order. No order at all. So I'm gonna make up an order right now. The order is, First up is Raphael J. Oliver from Small Business. And I'm going to, I'm going to, um, make sure you unmute yourself. I mean, unmute yourself. Um, let me go ahead and set the timer. What happened to ladies first? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I did have a, I did have one first, a lady first, but she dropped out. So you were second at first. Oh. <laughs> Hold on for a second. <laughs> So let me go ahead and um and set the um set the timer. And just let me know when you're ready. Okay. I'm ready. You were born ready. I already know that. <laughs> go. All right. You know, many of us today are looking at ways to pr uh, protect ourselves during this pandemic, especially when social distancing is a challenge. Hi, I'm Raphael Oliver, creator of the COVID Combat Mask, a 3D printed reusable mask that is airtight. Now, let me ask you, um, th does your current mask pass the fog test? And if it doesn't, how can you say it's safe? If unfiltered air can get out, certainly unfiltered air get, can get in. Perhaps you're okay with using the reusable mask over and over again that you're really only supposed to use one time and throw away or the masks that promise protection because they're infused with copper. You know, one of those masks that you can throw in the washer, but you have to wait until it dries before you can use it. My solution is the COVID combat mask, which is easy to uh, basically clean with soap and water. You simply take it apart like that. Remove your filter from the inside. You can wash it with soap and water or use uh, basic, you know, alcohol um, or even uh, the sanitizer solution. And then once you have dried it off, you put your filter back in, click it back together. And you basically just put it back on. There's no wait time at all. So if any of that makes sense to you and you would like to get involved with the uh, COVID combat mask, Simply visit our website at covidcombat.com. That's COVID Combat, more than just a face covering. And that's all I have. So I'm ready for questions. 
Okay. So um, you have a question, Bobby? Yeah. What is your combat mass retail for? Um, right now it's at nineteen ninety nine. Um, and from the research that I've done, I've seen uh, you know mask makers make their masks from anywhere from like uh, ten dollars upwards to like thirty five, based on some of the similar um, features and benefits that my mask offers. But my mask offers a lot more. Um, it actually has adjustable straps that can also be removed. It's got this little clip on it. So not a lot of mask makers are doing that. Plus it also has these uh, metal snaps. So you can actually take the entire strap off. And if you want to, you can change the color. So it comes in 10 different colors. Not a lot of masks um, out there offer those uh, benefits and features. And where can you find this mask? COVIDcombat.com right now. Um, right now, everything is marked out of stock uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm looking, so my, my next step for me is to basically look for an investor that could help me to find someone to make a mold uh, because, you know, 3D printing needs, you know, one by one is going to take some time. I have a fleet of 3D printers here at the house, but even still, that's, you know, that, that takes a lot of time. So if I can find an investor that would um, help me to get some molds created, whether, you know, somewhere in China or somewhere else can, you know, mass produce these a lot faster than, um, you know, that, that's the goal, you know, to, to try to create awareness, um, try to find some investors that way to help me create a mold. And last question, have you patented your product? Is it protected? It is right now because basically anyone is, you know, can do it. Um, like I said, there are a lot of mask makers out there right now. Um, if you know how to design anything in 3D and, and you have a 3D printer, you can do it yourself. There are a lot of uh, mask um, products out there that you can just simply download, but Unfortunately, mine is one that I actually designed from scratch myself, so. Great, thank you. Yep. Um, so, Rad, do you have a question for him? You, you got to unmic yourself. I'm um, unmute, I'm mute. Yeah, I've been one that's been watching, you know, Raphael, you developed this, this on social media from the beginning, so I've always been a fan of this kind of development. I do, I do um, echo the question about patenting. I think I may have said that to you before. Uh, I would. I think that even if you have some type of innovation, it may be worth it to you know, you know, look into patenting whatever innovation you're adding to the mass category. But my question is about the filters. Um, you know, you know how you know are you creating the filters, or is there some type of easy filter that people can use, or you know how are people you know accessing the filters that go with the mask? So, uh, good question on the filters. Uh, basically, this is a the 3M filtrate material that comes out of the HVAC um, units. So ideally out of this, what I would like to be able to do is develop a partnership with a company like 3M that makes these uh, specifically for the mask. Um, so that's basically what, it, you know, what I would do. But I, I would say that, you know, you can pretty much use any type of filter material that you want to. I am shipping the filter material out with, with the, um, the first mask that I've, that I've made. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm also selling refills if people want them, but you can go to the store and buy them yourselves and cut them out. So it's not that big of an issue. Now, in terms of, again, the patent piece, like, um, I, I don't have a problem with that. I've kind of gone through the process on another invention that I had with um, Invent Help. Um, I, don't have, I don't have a problem with that, taking that route. It's just that, um, you know, if I find an investor that wants to go that route with me, then, you know, that should be part of what the, whatever the deal is that we kind of work out. Um, and I just feel like anybody can do it. But I think, again, the thing that makes this mask unique is that I am saying that it is airtight uh, because of the rubber on it and, you know, the actual fitment on the face. You know, there's no air coming out of the circumference of the, of the mask. So I don't think that's something that a lot of um, other mask makers are claiming right now, even with millions of dollars behind them in marketing and all of that. So. <laughs> cool. Well, you know, like Andre 3000 said, I hope that you're the one, if not <laughs> in the prototype. No. Nah. <laughs> I appreciate it. So I do have Thanks a question. I do have a question for you as well. Um, so if you, how would you use the money if you win this particular, this um, competition? Well, again, I would, I would definitely want to create awareness for the mass. So um, whether that is, you know, creating some type of social media campaign and, trying to attract, attract investors as well as, um, you know, generating traffic to the website to uh, get purchases and show, hey, I've got the orders. I just need someone to manufacture it. it it's, it's, we got to find that right balance. 
Um, because right now, like I said, I can't do it all by myself. I mean, I've already gone through the process of designing it and putting up the website and the basic infrastructure. You know, I've already got all the training necessary to do, you know, to start this thing off. Um, but it's just to the, you know, to the point now where, you know, it can really get serious quickly um, if I, you know, put it out there. And right now, like, like Sarad has been saying, like he, he saw me a couple months back, you know, develop this and put it out. But I just been silent for the past couple of months because, you know, I don't want to get to the point like where um, your boy A-Rod or A-Ron was talking about earlier, where, you know, you're getting all this attention, but you don't have the inventory and you don't have the staff and whatnot to continue to produce this. So, and that's why, I, that's where I am right now. It's like, I don't have the bandwidth to do it. Um, so, you know, it's a great idea. I would love to pass it off to someone that can, um, you know, produce the mass producers for me. Um, if we want to go to patent route, just do it. And I think that $1,000 would, would help me to, you know, start making some contacts or, like I said, putting together some email campaigns, social media um, uh, campaigns. And I can even do some targeting through my business um, to, to uh, target specific people and, and you know, um, shoot emails out that way. So there's a lot of different strategies that I have in mind. I just need to, like I said, get to a point where I can just pass it off and, and let someone else work the magic out for me. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, so thank we, you. We're going to move on to, like I said, there's no system other than what I have written down here. Um, so we're going to move on to Mission Counseling and Consulting, LLC. And Raphael, if you could mic yourself, Hi. I mean, unmute yourself for me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, my name is Jindai Stafford. I'm the owner and operator of Mission Counseling Consulting, LLC. Um, background on me, I am a disabled Navy veteran. I um, also have an autoimmune disease. Um, I'm a marriage and family therapist licensed in the state of Washington. I'm a certified pharmacy technician. I'm a certified integrative health nutrition practitioner, and I'm also a licensed minister. Um, so my company offers trademarked programs that help to provide holistic whole body care. And so what we do is we teach um, how we teach our clients how to use food, herbs, and other natural and holistic practices and techniques to heal and bring balance to their bodies. Um, we focus mainly on mental and emotional health and wellness, physical, spiritual, relational, social, and environmental. Um, I always say that food is an addictive, it's the most addictive and the most easily accessible drug known to man. It's kind of a double-edged double -edged sword because it can either be your poison or your medicine. So you can have an allergy or it can be something that you thrive on. Um, according to statistics from the 2016 World Health Organization International, the top five uh, global causes of death, and these are the ones that specifically target African-American um, communities as well, is heart diseases, stroke, respiratory infections, which none of that stuff is good with COVID going on right now, Alzheimer's, dementia, and then cancer. And so one of my most impactful programs that I have, and I say it's the most impactful just because it's the one that I can reach the most people at the same, at one time, is the 90 Day Holistic Whole Body Makeover Group. And so what that includes is it's a Facebook group. It's a private access Facebook group. Um, they all get a hardbound copy of the workbook. It's um, the Holistic Whole Body Care Workbook. This is a workbook that I created to go with my trademark programs. So I wrote the book. Um, it also includes handouts and I go live almost every single day on the 90 day group. And then I also have um, some natural remedy things like essential oils that I send them. And so uh, what this covers is we go through the workbook and I know typically, you know, the, the coin is, 91 days to create a habit. Well, what I've found in research is that it actually takes the average person about 66 days to create a habit, which is why this is 90 days. And in the 90 days, we cover, we go through the workbook and we cover um, a whole body comprehensive profile, a BMI calculator, 90 day planner, there's recipes, there's seasonal, seasonal specialties because we know um, that certain fruits and vegetables cost, they're more cost effective when you buy in season. Um, I also do shopping on a shopping for healthy foods on a budget. So all the foods that are on the uh, grocery list that I provide, you can buy every single one of them at the dollar store. Uh, has a food journal for the 90 days. We go over coping mechanisms, natural remedies, building a good workout routine. And then uh, one of my favorite sections is the word associations and affirmations 
for positive manifestations. All right, we have to stop. We have to stop you. Three minutes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. No problem. No problem. All right. So um, I would like to um see if um if if Ravi have a um a question to ask. I do. So first off, hats off to you. You know, we are what we eat. I'm a big believer in that. Um, I have yeah. lived that most of my life. And when I get off track, I feel bad almost immediately. So yes. congratulations on putting this out into the community. Um, my question would be, how are you monetizing your model in terms of this 90-day group that you put together? Are you making money from the book? Or is it a membership subscription? How are you monetizing? So the 90-day program is actually, it's a, three, it's a $325 program. Um, I have ran it, though, where people just pay for the materials. So that's about $73. Um, so I, the, I don't have a problem with, with running the group. I run it, I try to run it only once a quarter though, just because it's, it's a group, right? So uh, the last group I just ran had nine people in it. And so I do, uh, I'm very much a people person. I'm very much a helper, I always wanna give. So I do individual things with them from time to time. Uh, because I want to check on young people, especially when I see they're not uh, participating or not participating as much as others, you know, I'll reach out to them and, you know, but that takes time again, right? I have school, family, other jobs that I'm doing. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I'm putting it out there. I mean, a lot of people, it's word of mouth too. So all the people who have gone through the program before are very quick to share their success stories. And so I get a lot of uh, business that way for this particular program. And final question, you measure success in lifestyle change. So it's not like a weight loss program. It's a lifestyle change program. And so people report back to kind of let you know if they were able to break the habit of, you know, unhealthy eating patterns. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then there's, there's three surveys in the book. So as we go through the 30 days out of the 90 days, I have them fill out the surveys. And then that way we can also kind of track because, you know, as you're going through it, it's such a long period of time. Um, but we actually have like the documentation and they can see their journey just out, you know, not just physically, but they can see. And again, it's a holistic approach. So it's not just about creating eating habits, but, you know, I'm also using uh, dialectical behavioral therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy to help change their mindset behind all the other things they have going on. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 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 I want to find out from you. Why do you, okay, my question for you basically is, when you have people who are interested in, you know, your service, but mm -hmm. let's say they may be, someone may be interested, but they may be in, I don't know, Texas or Europe or somewhere else, then is there any other ways of these people really like feeling connected to you and being able to really get the most out of the program, such as maybe, um, have you thought about building the app? Is that in the future? Like how would people really connect to this and stay connected? Um, so I do, I have a uh, platform. I do charge a monthly fee for it, but it's mission counseling and consulting. It's found on Mighty Networks. And so um, fortunately for me, I've had clients who were in uh, Texas, Washington state. Um, I've had a few people who are interested who live in uh, England. So with Facebook and, you know, kind of, technology, especially in the world we're in now, um, I've had uh, great success with, you know, having people feel connected still. Uh, but outside of the 90-day group, if they want to, they can join the platform. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you, have a, you have a question, Surat? Or you yeah, I guess my question just centers around scaling and, like, you know, what are your plans for scaling? You know, what's your volume now? And if you're wanting to increase your volume, then what is your infrastructure look like for scaling? You know what I mean? Like, because I understand you doing it kind of by yourself. Um, the technology, I think, could help. But what are your plans for scaling should this thing, like, really blow up and um, go to another level? Like, what are your plans? How, can, how are you going to multiply yourself? How are you going to make sure that you're able to grow with your um, client base? I'm so excited you asked that um, because I have been working. Um, so I got, I did a podcast back in February with a um, school in Nigeria and they actually want me to do a certification program, which is something I had been working on already. I have two individuals who I hired um, back in July who are finishing up the certification program. So I will have those two to help me, but this is definitely something that I am uh, selectively choosing people for just because again, 
it's so unique. It is a trademarked program, like I said, and because of my mental health background, um, along with all the other certifications, my, my background in medication and herbs and things like that, I want to make sure that I get people who have somewhat of that knowledge already. And so I have, and I have been in the process of building the certification program. So um, I'm also working on getting a government contract with the National Guard for the program. So I know and recognize that I have to move quickly um, on getting everything set in place so that I can scale it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, sharing. Um, and so we're gonna go to Steam Kits. Steam Kits, Mercy Best. Should I just go ahead and start? Um, yeah, I'm going to have to start. Go ahead, you can start. Mm -hmm. What if the cure for coronavirus-19 is trapped inside of the mind of someone who didn't think that they could become a scientist? Hi, my name is Mercy Bess. I'm from Albemarle, Virginia, and my company is Steam Kids, an innovative education brand that solves the lack of culturally relevant and engaging hands-on learning tools for students virtually at home or socially distanced in face-to-face -face classrooms. In the midst of these unprecedented times of outbreaks of coronavirus-19 and racial injustice, I've been navigating my own challenges, becoming the first PhD scientist in my extended family and an entrepreneur pivoting to ensure that STEAM Kits meets the community's needs. The STEAM Kits customer is anyone who loves and appreciates education and is ready to reimagine a new system based in equity where all students are afforded opportunities to explore. We are taking subjects out of silos and encouraging the integration of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM, and the visual and performing arts. The A needed to make STEM, STEAM. So if you or someone you know has people in your life ages five through 18, STEAM Kits is here to help you. The STEAM Kits products empower students, especially black students like me. Believe it or not, in 2020, I'm the only black student in my department. This striking statistic encouraged me to address this problem in a unique way. STEAM Kits is an effective solution based on research that we've published showing that our curriculum can encourage the intention of black students to pursue STEM careers. I had an early introduction to science that encouraged me to become a scientist. So through STEAM Kits, I wanna provide similar opportunities, exposing more black students to STEM. Early exposure is what led to more diverse and inclusive, thus more effective and creative STEM workforce. In July, we launched our first STEAM kit. It's called Ice Steam Boss. It's a custom design curriculum that helps students explore STEAM as they become the owner of their own fictional ice cream truck company. It includes five sets of activity materials and extension activities for only $35, which is less than $7 each activity. You can order and get free shipping right to your students' doors today on www.steamkits.com. Our goal would be to use these funds to help build our inventory, marketing, and amplifying the message of incorporating the visual and performing arts into STEM education. Engage with us at Steam Kits on your favorite social media site if you are ready to reimagine education by empowering the next generation of scientists, technologists, engineers, artists, and mathematicians. Let's work together to bring STEAM kits to families, schools, and community organizations today. Thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let me, ask you, let me ask you a question. Um, what is the logo you have? On, I see your, your banner, your vertical banner. Um, explain the logo for me because you have the hand, you know, so. Yeah, so um, it's basically a cartoon model that is um, no gender associated with it, um, but it has the uh, atom, which is like the smallest unit of anything. And what we did to the atom was we incorporated the colors of steam so that Roy G. Biv color construct for each of the little new neutrons on the atom. And um, the hand is just because we are delivering it to homes. We're making um, education more equitable um, and we're providing all of the materials needed to really do these experiments and different engineering projects and ensuring that all kids have, you know, equal opportunities to just explore and, and be creative. I'm, as, I'm asking you also because, you know, uh, we are in the digital age and so forth and we are virtual. So with the kits, so let's say someone do not buy a physical kit, 
actually two part two part question what's in the kids right like physically what's in the kids tangibly but also is it something that can be transferred over to like a an app as well um and i'm only asking that because of the day and age that we're in yes so we actually have a number of um materials within the kits okay okay i don't know if you can see this too well um here we go yeah that's better Uh, thank you and so for uh, one of the activities they make ice cream so we have all of the materials needed except the non perishable milk and sugar that will be needed okay um one of the other activities is music and technology integration so we have set of earphones um one is an art project where they draw a self-portrait so we have the picture frames and pictures for that um, we have one where they do a mathematical um, equations to create their own business plan. So we have a calculator um, and then all of the materials to build their own balloon powered ice cream truck. Okay. And so we do also offer digital um, activity downloads on our website um, so that families that may have access to go out to the stores and get their own materials or they have things at their own home, they can do that as well. And we're also reimagining a whole digital platform, especially for these educators um, that may not be able to buy the physical materials for all their students, but they still want it to benefit from the lesson plans and save time um, in their classroom as well. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ravi? Um, Yeah, my question would be, it sounds like you're marketing directly to families right now. Do you envision that you would start uh, marketing directly to the school systems? Because I know uh, a lot of the schools are trying to look at how they do business differently in terms of equity and making sure that more Black students have access to STEM. And to your point, more Black women have access to STEM. Right. Um, So right now we are doing a mass online marketing strategy. Um, But that has not been the most effective, especially given these challenging times. And so as students are reintegrating back to the virtual learning platforms, I've been interviewing teachers. And it's been a very eye-opening experience seeing the clear and um, need for teachers to just be supported in a way where um, a lot of teachers I've talked to are spending hours at a time, lesson planning. Um, They honestly don't even know how to switch to do science experiments through a virtual platform. So I think that would be a unique way that we can uh, collaborate with teachers as a new targeted demographic. Thank you. Um, So Rat, if you have anything. Uh, just quickly, you know, I've served as both a, an, an educator in the classroom and also led a community-based organization. And I can tell you right now, if I had the bag still, I would, you know, because I've done it before where I see people that have innovative solutions, I'll buy a bunch of them. So I wouldn't rule out those community-based organizations also. And I think the, the second thing is I, I want to hear more, not right now, but I think for your audience, they'll want to hear more about differentiation. Right, because I saw, you know, I looked, I listened to the kit, but I want to know how is this going to work if I don't have an elementary schooler, you know, or, you know, what are those things that are going to work for a high schooler and differentiation across age group, age groups, and you may have to have different kits, so you might have to diversify your product stream so that you can make sure that you differentiate across age groups within education, so just something to think about. Um, th- that's yeah. a great that's a great comment was um so bad because I thought about the same when I asked you earlier about the age and you said from f- from um basically from kindergarten to twelfth grade I automatically was thinking like mm, like what you know how would someone older you know you, how would you keep their interest or how would they you know they may look at it as a kitty type of thing so you would definitely have to um have the resources to not scale but diversify your your kids and stuff like that but thank you so much though thank you so much all right. Um, so now we have um, Troy Robinson. Troy, we're going to set you off. Um, we've got three minutes. And once again, as, we, as you already seen, we are um, coming and asking any questions. Do we have any questions for clarity? Okay. okay. And that I'll sounds let, good. Yep, I'll let you know. Okay. Hello, everybody. First off, let me say that. Um, <clears throat> so what is business in a box and why is it needed? I realize that a lot of people have the great ideas. To, and know how to do the job, but don't know the business of business. Um, my name is Troy Leon Robinson. I'm a graduate of CIC. I've been through the Fountain Fund. I'm manager and co-host of In My Humble Opinion Talk Show. I'm owner of Inspirational Cuts Barbershop. Um, I own Order Up Mobile Food Cart with my wife, Maxelia Robinson. And I'm also on the board of directors for Charlottesville Tomorrow. Um, the reason I came up with Business in the Box is because I needed it for my own growth. Um, 
we, there were so many things that I learned going through some of these schools that wasn't going to keep me in business from five to 10 years down the road. It was almost like you teach somebody something, they get the seed money, they, go, they start their business, but they, they dwindle out after a few years. So when I originally came up with it, um, after I was going to implement it to myself, I looked at the growing need in the city of Charlottesville for the, um, the refugees that were coming in. So then I said, okay, what binds all of us together? Food. Food eating is what brings unity to each and every person, regardless of where you are in the world. So COVID made me reevaluate and kind of contort my thought process like water, just so I could keep it going. And I realized that it works for any and all businesses. Um, what we offer is the ability to bring in a client. We talk to them from whatever level of business that they're at. Some people are, they don't, they just have an idea. They don't have a business license. They don't have anything. Some people already have a business, but they don't know the fine tuned parts of business. And some people need seed money to help grow their new next business ventures. Uh, business in a box offers all those types of things. We stay connected with each and every business through the duration of their business, not just the, the entry points of it. Um, when I first got started, I didn't know what a SWOT analysis plan was, marketing overviews, one month profit insurance statements. I knew none of these things and I had been in business for years. So it, I figured I couldn't be the only one. And I know that in order for somebody to stay in business past two years and make it to 10 years, you have to have some type of, of product that's gonna help you along the way. So we have everything from accounting of uh, people to mentorship, uh, people to help you get your insurance for your business. Um, but the strongest part of our business is that we don't, especially for the people that come in that need additional revenue to start uh, buying products, is that we don't ask for a monthly fee. What we do is we charge a percentage of the business. We do an 80-20 split. So when your business is in a feasting phase, we get 20%. When your business, let's say if you have a summertime business, when the wintertime comes and you're hardly working, you don't have that monthly pay that you have to do. You only spend 20%. Hey, Troy, so you we, have to, do, we have to cut you off in three this minutes. Last, this last sentence. So if you only make $100, we only take 20% of that $100. And I believe that's what's going to keep your business going. Uh, year after year, so All we right. can grow with you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, um, Ravi, do you have any questions? Yeah, Troy, what a fantastic idea. And um, I love all of the different um, groups you've been involved with and the, that uh, you're doing in terms of your board service on Seville tomorrow. So thank you for that. Uh, just you. a quick question. Um, so it's the 80-20 split. I understand that. Um, so two questions, really. How are you getting the word out to people in the community? Because the first I've heard of it, um, I think it's a great idea, but I, I haven't heard of it personally. So how are you getting the word out? Um, and then have you built your own business model to see that 80-20 split can sustain you? Yes, ma'am. Um, the um, business, I own Order Up Mobile Food Cart. So Business in a Box is actually umbrellaed under Order Up Mobile Food Cart, as will all the other businesses be once we do the partnership. Okay. I have not only used it in my own business, but I've started to franchise um, other food businesses in the Call Pepper and Orange County area. And in the Charlottesville area, we're implementing it to a plumbing company and a black uh, media company, newspaper media company. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right, great. Thank you. Um, so right. Yeah, um, I guess, you know, the numbers make me think a little bit because I think like if somebody going to own 20% of my business, you know, like, is there a term? It's 20% of, of the revenue. I'm sorry. 20% of revenue also. It's the, it's the so that the way it'll, it'll additionally help a person stay in business. So if I give you the money and you, let's say you do concrete work in the summertime, you're doing well. When wintertime comes and you don't have any jobs, and I still tell you, you owe me that $500, that can put you in a stressful situation, which makes you mm -hmm. sell your business or start to diminish the work that you say. Like your price might be $50 an hour. You might put it at $20 an hour just so you can try to gain some revenue so you can pay your bills. But if you're only having to pay a percentage of your business, then it's not as stressful. And you may be able to stay in business uh, at a longer duration. Mm -hmm. I like it. I mean, I like the concept, especially for folks who are trying, it's almost like a consulting company. But I think the thing that I would want to consider is the pricing structure. Maybe there's a dual pricing structure right. where there's like 20% or this flat fee, whatever is highest, right? Well, and the reason then, we do the, I'm sorry. 
-hmm. reason we think about the 20% is so that we can stick with the person throughout the duration. Because one of the problems, especially in the black and brown community is we give you the money and you go one degree off. Well, one degree isn't bad in the first year of its inception, but five years down the line, that one degree has put you so far away, you don't even know how you started with your business. And that makes businesses fail because they can't restart and go back because they're too far off at that point. I got it. So the 20% is to keep everybody on board. I got you. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah my, my concern is the same as Sorrell. I, I share that. And, um, and I'm not 100% sure if your answer really satisfied that to me. I don't know okay. if it did for Sorrell or not. But for me, um, if you say like 20% of the net, I can see that more so than 20% of my gross revenue. That's a lot. 20% no, 20, 20 of your profit. Like, oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. Yeah, the bills have to be paid first. It's twenty percent of the profit. All right, yeah, that's, yeah. Thank I wouldn't gouge. Thank you very much. Like that. You made my heart hurt. Oh, thank sorry. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I think a lot of people need that service uh, because uh, you got to think about it. A lot of they do. You know, it's the mindset of going into business. African American people, people in marginalized community, haven't even thought about that. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that don't even know where to start. So I think you're on to something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank I think, you. yeah, I'm, in, you know, with the combination of um, resources in this community, like you know, we have CIC, but then we have you doing what you're doing. If someone went un up under you, they could, they feel as though they have a support system. And yes. I, think, I think that's really truly the value in your service and um, from what I'm hearing. Yeah. Thank you. But we're going to move on. Thank you, Troy. We appreciate you um, coming on. Um, Thank you for your time. Yep. So once we, um, Right now we are at, this is no, Selena, you don't have to rush at all. I'm just going, I'm just putting this out there for everyone, people who, because people are watching this on YouTube and they're watching it on the actual website and those who are in this actual room. So it's three different um, um, stream, you know, survey, ways of watching it. So I'm going to put this out there to, ev to everyone now. Um, Selena, is, Selena is the last um, participant, uh, right? Yes. Yeah, she's the last participant. So what we're going to do once she, once um, Selena, or Dr. Selena, excuse me, um, Dr. Selena, um, um, you know, do her pitch, then the judges, we're going to ask questions if we have anything to clarify, and then we're going to go into a breakout room. So you're not going to see us. You may hear music, or, or we may just hear, like, you know, um, Nate from WTJU go through the sponsors again and just kind of talk about the, um, the actual event. But from that point, we're going to go into a breakout room and we're going to discuss um, who, who we think should win and, and how we're going to do the prizes and stuff like that. So um, don't leave once we leave. It's not over. Come back so you can see the winners, okay? So just stay tuned, okay? So Selena, Dr. Selena, excuse me, um, can you please start? And I will make sure I set you on your time, your timer. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Um, I am Selena Cozart of Selena Cozart Consulting, which is a, a concern that focuses on facilitation, training, and coaching with a focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion, along with strategic planning. Um, my clients are mainly nonprofit organizations, small businesses, and individuals interested in support in transformation of their organization or their indivi individual. Um, the problem that I solve is the inability to see the back of your head. Um, and what I mean by that is in terms of it being figurative is that organizations don't always know what they need. It can be right there with them all the time, but they can't see it for themselves. And what I, I do is I create a container that allows them to be able to think strategically about the moves that they want to make. Um, and like I said, I focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that work has really um, taken off. I've, I've been doing this work for over 20 years. And um, as we, we have seen how the climate has changed over the last few months, um, and I've had a lot of organizations reaching out to me for this kind of consulting, um, where I work with them either on their strategic plan in particular, or if they need um, training or facilitation around conversations about race, diversity, and equity. I also work with organizations on um, developing their equity plans. If they're looking at how do they want to transform their organization such that they are more equitable in their thinking, planning, and implementing. Um, 
So uh, let's see. So as I said, I have 20 years of experience in the DEI world. Uh, my background is in education. And educator, a life. All of those things have, have brought me to a place where I have um, a way of offering presence and an ear to people so that they are able to have, um, you know, a, a person that they can confide in about difficult conversations and get feedback on what they should do next. Um, my coaching, I liken it to um, solving a puzzle. If you have a puzzle in a box, um, you have the picture on the front. Um, this isn't working with my background, but there's a picture. And what I help people do is take the pieces out of the box and spread them out and start to make decisions about how they fit together. Um, as long as they're in the box, they're unable to put together properly. Um, so if I were to win the prize, I would use that money to develop evergreen services so that um, I can have things online where I could deliver um, products and not actually have to be there. So that would be the deal. Thank you. Thank you. Let's stop this. Okay. Um, Robbie, do you have any questions? Yes, Lena. Um, first off, again, sounds like you're doing tremendous work and, and certainly I myself have needed the service at the United Way. And so it's nice to hear that you've, uh, you're in our community and that you've got the kind of uh, background you do. Um, I would just be curious, how do you decide what to charge clients? Is it hourly or by the project? How does that work? I, it's a combination of both. I have an hourly rate. Um, and then I also, depending on the size of the work, um, for instance, if it's it's a different price if you're just, if I'm coming to do a half day workshop, I, I do a different calculation if it's a longer term engagement. Um, okay. if that's something that's that so it's by the project and you can kind of decide what the client, what their needs are. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so Rat. Yeah, well, I just wanted to know, that was a good question. Uh, I want to know about what, like, if you were to offer your signature um, product or service, like, what would you say to the client? Like, this is what we do best. This is, this is who we are. This is what we do. But we do a lot of things, but this is our signature service. What would you say? I would say um, helping organizations to develop their equity lens for their, for the organization. Um, and that would be looking at basically doing a discrepancy analysis of looking at what they intend and what it is that they're actually producing and looking at the discrepancy and seeing what they need to do to change in order to be where they actually desire to be. Okay. I think the only question, cause I, you know, I know, so, I know so much about you already, you know, be friends and everything. And I've, I've you know, I know your, um, your service. Um, but I do have a question that I, you know, that I typically ask someone, in your well, anyone for the most part, most businesses like what makes your business or your service different than anyone else that's doing the same things? You know, we have a lot of like you know coaches coming up. We have um, various facilitators. So, what separates you from your competition? Um, well, I would say my presence and my my background as an educator because I've been an educator, I've been um, an advisor, and I my PhD was focused on multicultural education and diversity. I have the academic background to be able to do research and take clients through um, the different information that could be useful to them. So that combination of experience of working with people and having a mind for research is what sets me apart. Hey, can I say sometimes you pay for that PhD, you better sell it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Absolutely. Sir. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So, um, so oh, great time is is five fifty eight. Um, so thank you guys for um, you know, for competing. So we're gonna go into a breakout room. Um, I'm gonna have Nate, Nathan. Yeah, Nathan, you here, Nathan. Um, instead of you playing music, would you mind just staying on and just, just um, you know, talking about the festival? I mean, the the expo. Sure. Okay, because just because I don't want people who may, you know not be on the zoom who may be watching yeah. may may disappear on us you know sure 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 no that's okay. fine i know uh how long of uh, deliberations do y'all think it can be um i mean i would say the tops would be top would be five minutes tops all right cool tops good that yeah. sounds good i'll keep it going <laughs> okay all right
All right, uh, Ty, Ravi, Sarad, I'm going to go ahead and send you to a room. Let's uh, see if it works. Uh, I think you have to go. Um, okay. Yeah, that's what you're doing. So you may have to tell Ravi if she. Yeah, you have to. You have to opt in. There they go. All right, buddy. Well, hey, I want to thank everybody who who gave pitches. Those were all really good. Like, I really appreciated what uh, what y'all were saying and and um, the things that you are pouring your energy and time into. Um, I am going to go ahead and share screen just a little bit again because uh, we do have again the sponsors and this is uh, I know those of you who've been here all afternoon know these probably by heart right now but for anybody who's just kind of checking in at blackbusinessexpo.org once again thanks to Bama Works to UVA's Division for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion to Vinegar Hill Magazine uh, United Way of Greater Charlottesville the Community Investment Collaborative York Property and the Charlottesville Chamber of Commerce uh, thanks to everybody who's made this possible um, I want to hear from you all uh, what what has been your experience today what's been the highlight for you uh, those of you who are still on the call I see a few uh, names that I recognize and know and I'm glad you're here but uh, really anybody who uh, gave a pitch or just otherwise what, what was good what could we do better next year and this is Troy how y'all doing um, the highlight for me was uh, I've been watching all day you know so uh, it was I'm glad to see y'all pull this together you know I know that we all wanted to be together at X Park but I think this was uh, this was very informative and well put out. So, okay. just be, I mean, being able to be on stage, so to speak, with these ladies, um, regardless of who wins, I would love to partner with them. You know, in, in anything that they do. I mean, y'all y'all really have great products, and I'd I'd be honored to be part of them. I appreciate you saying that, Troy. Uh, and I I, um, I don't know. I, 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 Apology is the wrong word, but uh, just a, a awareness that this is definitely the, the first uh, virtual event of this scale that I've tried to pull together. So um, trying to manage the, the audio and video flows and everything. I don't know if it's been you know, kept your attention well enough or, or if there's some other things that could be better if we ever do this kind of thing in the future. But uh, yeah, thank you for the positive feedback, Troy. Yeah, this is Jindai. Um, this this has been amazing. I I have loved hearing all of the businesses that are in Charlottesville or, you know, local areas. And I just think it's amazing, like how many, uh, like Troy said, like how many opportunities for partnerships there are. I mean, I just think that's amazing. So I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. <laughs> Thank you guys for continuing, even though, you know, you had to go about it a different way. I just appreciate the time that you had to pour into uh, creating this because I've done conferences and you know had to switch them it is not an easy task so thank you <laughs> and i'm glad to report too just the early analytics uh on the um website for today we've had more than 300 people stop by so far to uh, blackbusinessexpo.org which is pretty cool i know the zoom has been a few dozen but uh um but yeah it's kind of nice to I and mean, that's about what we would have gotten in person honestly so <laughs> it's all good <laughs> uh anybody yeah, for, for me, I would say this has been very uh, inspirational um, in a lot of ways to see in a lot of black businesses out there doing their thing. And uh, it's definitely been encouraging, too, for me to, you know, uh, to keep on keeping on, you know, just keep being creative and uh, keep trying to grow and scale the business. So great. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much. Um, I'm hearing, I mean, positive feedback is always welcome, right? But uh, <laughs> if there's anything we can do better, please let me know that, too. Um, all right. So what, uh, what do you think? Uh, anybody else who hasn't, uh, shared some feedback and thoughts yet? Oh, hi. I was going to say, I loved, um, the diversity of different businesses that are out there. Cause I didn't know many of them existed. So I'd definitely be saving this chat and like following all of your pages and engaging with you guys on social media. This has been a, a great experience. Um, one, I guess, one comment, um, I think maybe longer breaks in between the sessions, uh, just so we can get away from the screen or grab a snack. Um, but I love the little music breaks, even though they were like one minute and short. But I think if they were a little bit longer, um, that would be even better. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, and I should actually give a shout out to, to uh, Nathaniel Starr. His latest album is what has been uh, uh, keeping us entertained with uh, almost all those music breaks today. And, and he's a cool dude anyway. And his music for this event has been uh, right on point. So um, public shout out for, for Nathaniel Starr's latest album. Go check it out. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so let me uh, let things. Uh, I, I hear Ty in the next room. Um, he's still they're still discussing. So I'm just going to play another little bit of the famous star, and we'll uh, we'll come back in just a moment. <laughs> To live in this skin, this beautiful melanin. You try to make it uncomfortable, but I'll never let you win. To live in this skin, this beautiful melanin. You try to make me uncomfortable, but I'll never let you win. They say we don't even feel pain the same. I got a broken bone, you treat it like a migraine. Studies show that doctors feel like black people have a stronger threshold for pain. You clutch your purse when I pass you. Like I got nothing better to do than harass you. It's also biologically proven that if I wanted your purse, your old wrinkled arm could not stop me. Ooh, now it's raining outside. Yeah, now it's cold outside. Should I go grab my hoodie? Yeah. That's a question, buddy. Walking down the street, I see you reach across your seat to lock your door. Lady. Real quick, too. Shuffling, like, let me hear them lock this door. Oh my God, here he comes. No. To live in this skin, this beautiful melanin. You try to make it uncomfortable, but I'll never let you win. It's a prayer to live in this skin, this beautiful melanin. You try to make me uncomfortable, but I'll never let you win. I've heard of every obstacle that you put in my path. So by default, I'm the top of my class. It's crazy, because then you're like, she took my job. She's only Get over yourself. You're too dark, you're too light, you talk white, you're not black enough. Can I touch your hair? No. Back it up. I mean, what is it with this thing of just putting your hands in black women's hair unannounced, unasked, unhinted? Walking down the street and see a group of men, they act so out of control. Lately. Hey, come on, come in. Hey, hey. Tell them no, they take it personal, but they can take it, so then they go personal. Now you are home. This fragile male ego thing needs to stop. Those situations turn violent, man. We're making it difficult. To live in this skin, this beautiful melanin. You try to make me uncomfortable, but I'll never let you win. It's a bridge to live in this skin, this beautiful melanin. You try to make me uncomfortable, but I'll never let you win. To live in this skin, this beautiful melanin. Oh, yeah. You try to make you uncomfortable, but I'll never let you win. To live in this skin, this beautiful melanin. Try to make me uncomfortable, but I'll never let you win. It's a prayer to live in this skin. Just 
wanna live. It's the challenge of it all. Visualize the struggle if I could I would bring them all back and tell them I love you They turn pain into power Grain into flour The lineage of kings We must reclaim our towers The strong got devoured While the weak gain respect And a hundred years later We still have chains around our neck We traded iron in for copper Copper in for gold Gold in for platinum Trying to buy back our soul Raped on ships Screaming out remember me It echoes in my mind So my mind will remember Remember she remains beautiful, lady of the water. I see her in my mother. I will teach her to my daughter. She will teach it to her daughter. The dream, the dream. One hundred years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty. In the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. One hundred years later. Day and day. In a rise to the majestic heights, a meeting physical forms for soul forms. You have been the veterans of creative suffering. One hundred years later, to soul forms. I was with King on the balcony. I was lying on the ship with them on top of me. I was in the field picking cotton tea. I died so you can live and fulfill our prophecy. Hey, Just, Just want to give you all an update. They are still talking over there in the breakout room. Getting closer to a decision, I think, but uh, we're still waiting. So hang in there just a few more minutes, though. One hundred years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty, in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. One hundred years later. I hate to fade out Dr. King's voice, but uh, Ty Cooper is back from the breakout room, as is uh, Sarad. Ravi, I guess, will join us here in a minute. Uh, Ty, you want to take it away? You're muted, but uh, what is the decision? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Let me close that down. Hold up. That's my bad. All right, there we go. <laughs> Uh, I'm not hearing you still. Yeah, I think it automatically mutes us. We have to manually unmute once we come back in the room. Yeah. But yeah, you could turn your mic off, um, I Nate. It. Okay. Nate? No, I, I hear that noise. Okay, now it's better. It's off. Yeah, okay. So um, thank you for returning. And, um, so we appreciate everyone. So once again, we, um, we just completed the um, Black Business um, Expo and the expedition. I mean, I said expedition. Um, it's been a lot. I've been in this one seat like since like 11 something. Um, the Black Business Expo um, business, comp business pitch competition. So thank you so much for um, participating and those of you who are watching. And uh, we really appreciate the support. So this... I had said like five minutes, three to five minutes, but it took longer because it was a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, so we, we went through it. We talked, we discussed it. Um, Ravi Respeto from the United Way. So we had Davenport from um, 
Vintage Vinegar Hill, and myself, Todd Cooper, the director of this um, business expo and owner of Life Life View Marketing. So we got we we have two gifts, right? Not two gifts. We have two prizes. And at one time, you know, I was I was thinking about giving one prize. I mean, one person both prizes. Um, it's a cash prize and it's a a video package, which hand in hand could work very well for your company. You know, could really help you. But then when we um, you know, when you guys presented and we went through and we just discussed it, it's too difficult to give it to one person. Like we have five, um, five um, participants. I wish we had five prizes and we only have two, and uh, which is unfortunate because all of you guys did, did a great job, all of you. Um, so the tough decision that we had to make, though, is narrowed it down to two people. Um, and what we wanted to do at first, I want to say something to Raphael. Um, Raphael, we, you were you 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 were up there in our running, right? Um, but the thing, it was so close. It was so close. And the thing that kind of like bothered us a little bit was your willingness to kind of like give it up, like you know, like you didn't want to, you know, you didn't care about you know like getting the patent. Um, and you was like, well, you know, anyone could make it. So when you presenting though, like you know, the business page competition, you like yo, anyone can make it. There's a bunch of them out there. I like your, I like your mask. Like I could, you know, I feel as though no, nothing will get through the cushion. So I'm like, why not, like you know, really, um, really go through and really feel it. Like you know, be be, be more passionate about it. And we didn't really feel the passion. You just a, a cool dude, anyway. But we just didn't feel the passion, and um. And I was like, and I, and, and your willingness was kind of like, hey, well, anyone, you know, you could just manufacture, you can, you know, anyone could just go ahead and make it. It was just really kind of nonchalant. Um, it didn't take away from the actual product. It was just you, like, you know, when you're doing the business page, man, reinvesting in you, like you're the driving force behind the actual product, right? So, and, so, and we believe in you, right? But, but when you're nonchalant about it, it's almost like, okay, I don't know, especially when you're competing with other contestants and be like yo well he's right here well she's right here or he's right here who do we give it to and we got to go with the one that we felt that was more passionate about the product or the service that they provided but i i wanted to speak to you about that because i think you know when you're speaking to um uh, a panel you know on this kind of like you know with the business page i think you should keep that in mind you know what i mean i think you should keep that in mind i think i know sarad wanted to share something as well thank you well, you know, I thought, you know, like, you're my man. You know, I got a lot of people that I know in this group, so this is tough for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but I, I think that, you know, really rethinking your intellectual property and protecting your protecting your idea uh, is important. And I think for the long term, I mean, this could be something that could take care of your great, great, great grandchildren, you know what I mean, should you protect your intellectual property. So I would say don't de-emphasize that in your pitches and, you know, um, that's the only, but other than that, I, I thought it was amazing. I already liked the product, but I think not protecting intellectual property was like, it was, it was, it was a tough, it was tough. Yeah. It's a product that I want to buy. Like I want to order something from you. So, you know, and so, um, Troy too, and Troy bought, Troy bought my mask that, that my seamstress makes. So, and, and I'm, I sell masks and Sarah sell masks, but I want to get yours. So do you understand? Like, the love that, that we like the product. So I'm gonna order one if you can make it for us and everything. But so um, but we had to go and, and announce the actual winners that who we wanted to um who we decided to give it to, and it was very close. Um I'm gonna start with my number our number one choice because since we have two prizes and we don't know, we have our assumption of what we think you need, but you know what you want. So instead of us dictating. I'm going to give you the cash. We're going to give you the cash. We're going to give you the, the, um, the branding video. We're going to allow the number one, our first choice, our top choice to decide which one that person wants. And then that, that, um, that second winner will get, you know, whatever that first, um, person, that first prize, you know, was given to. So, um, so we're going to go with our first prize and our, our first prize will go to steam kits. It was, um, steam kits. You got to unmute, unmute yourself. It was a um, great idea. I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me okay. now? Yeah, I, can, I got you. It was a great, it's a, it's a great idea. I think everyone in this group, um, you know, recognizes that. It was a great idea. Um, and I love, I'm a sucker for kids, right? You know, I, my daughter, I got my, you know, well, my daughter was just left, 
she came up here and then she had to leave. She was going back to Blacksburg area. But, um, you know, um, my daughter, my granddaughter's in Montessori school. Um, this is her first year she started, so we got her in there. And, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking of your product. And I'm like, okay, I need that kit to my baby girl. Because in Montessori, she's doing all these things. She's working with nature. She's in the dirt. She's playing with worms. You know, while other people, unfortunately, other people are on the com kids at five years old, six years old on the computer right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, luckily, my granddaughter is not on the computer, you know, right now, you know. So, I really, res you know, what you offer is really resonate with me, and I I'm going to support that. So, you let me know when you, uh, when that stuff is ready to send to me, like I want to buy one. Yeah, and we're ready. Mm -hmm. You're ready. See, mm -hmm. and that's another reason why you won, because you're ready to go. Like, it's there. And you showed us, and you have a beautiful um, presentation as well. So um, you put a lot of work into it, and that passion, I felt that passion from you. So I really appreciate that. Uh, it did kind of, it did, at some point, it did feel as though you were reading, like, a, your presentation. Um, but at one time, it, it didn't feel like that in the beginning of the expo at 12 o'clock. So when you, when you present, just go from your heart, just like, you know, cause it sounded like it was boom. And then some stuff you were missing, but the fact is when you present it the first time, which helped for me because I already knew certain things already. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just kind of, um, you know, just speak, just continue to speak from the heart, but you have a great product. So I want to we need to know, do you want the thousand dollars or do you want the 15 second, um, branding video? Yeah, that's a really tough, <laughs> um can do i have to tell you today or yeah, yes ma'am the oh. second the second the second um place person business needs to know what they're going to get so okay how much is the branding video worth three thousand i charge three thousand for the 15 second commercial sometimes i give a discount but three so i think i'll go with that but but what hold on a second but where, i'm gonna give you a, a, another opportunity mm -hmm. what's worth it to you may not be three thousand, right? It may be less than them because it's not cash in hand. But um, people love the videos that I do. They get um, they get great results. Um, they get increased business. They get elected into their seats. Um, you know, as far as politicians, um, nonprofits raise more money. For profit organizations get more exposure, so they make more money. So the video could be a great thing. I just want to make sure that you that is is valued that you value it it that way in the same way that I just described, you know, so, so let me know again, what you, which one you want. Yeah, oh, this is tough. Um, can I get some crowd feedback? <laughs> oh, she gonna phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna phone a lifeline. <laughs> My gut says the money, um, just because I know, I already have thoughts of where I can use that. Um, but the the marketing has been something that I've always wanted to do, and I just okay. don't have the resource to do that right now. Okay. All right. If, if can I, I can speak because she asked, it's just that uh, you have a great product. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, Thank you. I, I want my kids to find out about your product as well. So I can't tell you which one to choose, but I just know that the more people that hear you, the more beneficial it's going to be down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I know what I would I would choose for you and <laughs> like I said the video for you because I think that you already ready to go you need marketing to get you out there more but that's your choice you know what I'm saying we did I would say this we shot um I shot um Sarad's video for his commercial I got it back three two before. years ago yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> two years ago three years ago uh, it was uh, two years ago. Three. No, it was two? 2018. Oh, it was 18? Yeah, it okay. was early 18. It was February 18th. Okay, so like two and a half years ago. And he still has it on his website. Yeah. And we don't say, and, and the video is strategy behind it. It doesn't say anything. No one mentioned Vinegar Hill clothing at all. You just see it everywhere. And you see the implication. You see the black and white. You see um, the vintage, vintage Vinegar Hill. So you, so you see the black and white. And that was done intentionally. I shot it in Richmond instead of Charlottesville because of the type of building they had there. So there's strategy that goes behind the stuff that I do. So um, if you do lean to that, you will have strategy behind um, what we create. So it's up to you. I'll do the video. Okay. So the video. 
So someone else who will need that, someone else who want that cash is happy you picked the video. They was like, I want that cash. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's all good. We're going to make it work. I'm, I, I may even give you a 30 second video, um, Mercy, just because. All right. I didn't, I didn't add that before, but I, I may just do that just because. All right. So um, let me see. So we have our second place. This was difficult, very difficult because we was like, okay, how would you get this out in a way where someone would actually like stick to it and support it and help, help, help you support them, help you help them. Uh, you probably, y'all probably know who I'm leaning towards, but so it was kind of difficult because we had, we have, um, you know, we had, we, like I said, we had Raphael who has the, um, the mask that we all like. Right. But, you know, but we just think that, you know, he was like, the IP, you know, he was kind of loose with the IP and willing to give it up. And so, um, and, and that was no reflection on him. It was no reflection on the actual product. It was just his space, you know, that he's in. So, um, Selena, organizations need your service. Human, human beings need your service. Um, Troy, you know, you could be extremely helpful to businesses, um, like extremely. Um, mission, um, People, humans need your business, your your service. Like you know, that's is life changing. So, but we had to go with one, and we went with mission, and um, yeah, we went with mission. Um, mission, un, un, uh, unmute yourself, please. Hi. Yeah, we went, we went, we went to uh, with you for various reasons, but the main reason is your own testimony. Yeah. Like you know, your own testimony. That's really why we went with you. Um, yes, your product, you, you have product, you read the goal, you've um, published um, this 400-page um, um, workbook. Mm -hmm. um, and so to, to publish a 400-page workbook, um, a lot of people don't even read 400-page books. Like, <laughs> and, and, like, you know what I mean? And you, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you, and you, you dug in, you, you had to have dug in, mm -hmm. and it's a plan. And I love, your, I love the statement you made where you said um, 66 days to create a habit. And, you know, but you got 90 days. Your work was 90 days. It's like, yes. okay, so you're going to break that habit and we're going yes. to take, we're gonna take you beyond yes. and, and, and give you some enrichment. And I thought that that was amazing. So it was really close um, between Raphael, you know, Selena, Troy. Like, it was just so, it was just close. Like, you know, so, um, but, you know, you don't get I the want... thousand dollars. Um, I'm sorry, Sarat. Oh, can I say something? Yeah, too? absolutely, absolutely. Well, I just wanted to say that I want when I see you, Ty. We gonna have to. We gonna man. We gonna have to put on the boxing gloves because this was terrible for me. Because all these people are my friends. I'm like, how you gonna ask me to be a judge? Like, I got I got years in the game working with Selena. Me and Troy got business together. I'm like, man, I'm I don't like this at all. So yeah, I you know what? You know, so, um, but the thing that stood out for me with the counseling. Um, you know, and Raphael too, like, I, I mean, we grew up together. So like, but the thing that stood out for me was the potential for the certification program. I think that, you know, certification programs are becoming more lucrative, becoming more valuable to people than like four year college degrees. So yeah. if you're able to transform this into something that's a, like a certification program where people can become practitioners and that becomes a product, wow. I mean, sky's the wow. limit. So that's what really kind of worked on it wow. for me. But, um, but yeah, very tough decision. So. Yep. So um thank you. Yeah. Thank so you um yep. So um we need to um Jen, I hate messing up your name. Oh, Miss Stafford. I'm gonna take the easy way out. Miss Miss Stafford. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Miss Stafford, I need um your information. I have well, actually I have it. So what I'm gonna do, um CIC, you know, who you saw earlier, um Stephen um Davis. Um he's the one that's gonna cut the check to you so okay. I, I will connect the two of you and then he will you know um cut the check and everything and you'll get yours um okay. and mercy mercy you and i you know we will talk so we could plan the shoot um like i said earlier um if you were um here when i was speaking on my panel on um, what i do i speak to the I, I connect with the person i listen to the person so i listen to my client and figure out what they need what they're up against what their strengths and weaknesses are and then we go and start the you know, the phase of producing, meaning that we'll figure out, okay, what do we want to show? Um, how many of these kits? So remember what Sarah said, like, you know, diversify your kits. So maybe you should do that. Maybe we should actually shoot it when you can, 